choose a file name, whatever name you wish to choose, you can choose that name. Whatever name you wish to choose, you could choose that name, followed by an ID. Every device file is identified, or every driver's device file is identified with an ID. This unique ID comprises of two elements, what we call as a major number, the other one we refer to as a minor number. Minor and major, these two digits together make up a device ID. So let's take a look at one file, watch this. We know about the proc file system, isn't it? There is a file called devices in the proc file system, which would show the existing drivers which have already been registered. Now this particular dump, you can see here, these are the existing drivers which, have, which are currently registered. In this list, you see some IDs being used. So you could pick a unique ID which is not in use. The range is from 0 to 4K. So you can have from 1 to 4K numbers. I think 300 is free here. So I make use of 300 because I've hard-coded that in my code. So it will be C. C to say that this is representing a CAD driver. We need to mention which driver this file is representing. C for CAD driver, B for block driver. What we are writing currently are CAD drivers. So since we are representing a CAD driver, we will see that. And then 300 and 0, these two together make up the number. 300, 0 will make up that unique number, unique ID. 300 component of it should be unique. That's called the major number. The 0 is referred as a minor number. So this major plus minor together makes a device ID. 300 and 0. Yes. So total ID is a combination of these two, in which the first number, the major number, should not conflict. So 300 is a globally unique number there, not in use. So we have verified that first that 300 is not in use, and then we have reserved that. So this will now create a file. We know the basics already. Creating a file means what? What is created right now in the kernel space? I node is allocated. And we also know about how the I nodes are assigned to file operations. In the I nodes, you have a pointer called file ops. Initial sessions, we have looked at that. This file ops pointer refers to the operations of that particular file. Normally, if you create a file of an ext2 or ext3, you're creating an I node of ext2 or ext3, isn't it? These I nodes will have assigned operations of ext2 file system or ext3 file system. What we have just done, we have created inode of type tempfs, isn't it? So tempfs inodes will not have the FOPS initialized. FOPS now currently is referring to null. It means the file operations have not yet been assigned to this file. So inode is created with this step and file operations are not assigned to this kind of file nodes. Device I nodes are not assigned with the file operations. ext2 I nodes, ext3 I nodes, any of the persistent file system I nodes, if you create them, they are assigned to file system specific operations. Since these are logical files, no operations are by default bound to them. It means if an application tries to open this now, what should happen? Normally, what happens when an application initiates an open call on a file? It steps into sysopen. What does sysopen do? We've seen this whole thing in the IO sessions initially. What does sysopen do? Sysopen will search the I node and follow the FOPS pointer and then trace out the appropriate open call in the file operations bound to that file and then call that open call, isn't it? Now, if an application tries to do the same on this file now, open, the call should go into sysopen sysopen should fail finding an appropriate operation because the file right now is not bound to any operation. You've seen those basics earlier, I hope you remember those. So obviously now, watch this. 
I've got an application. I've got a normal use case program which is trying to do an open on that file. What should happen to this open call now? Open calling sysopen, sysopen unable to find an appropriate operation. Sysopen should return a failure status. Sysopen returning a failure status would mean this FT should be a minus one. Run this and verify that. So you could see, I didn't do an, a termination thing after that exception check. So it went ahead into read, which obviously will not work. It is open itself as failed. Had I terminated the program in the exception handling there, read would not have happened. So here, uh, failed equality. The descriptor minus one. That's because the open operation is not bound to our file yet. We have just created the I node and no operations are yet bound to it. In step two, what we do, we write our driver. And we show our driver to the VFS as if it is a file operations for that I node. It means we present our driver as valid set of operations on the I node that we have created earlier. So whenever our file is used with open read write, VFS will call our driver or step into our driver functions because in VFS view, our driver is a valid set of operations on that file. So in step two, we do that. It means we write our driver logic. We present to VFS as if it is file operations for the file that we have created. Okay, sit down. Let's look at the step two. Watch this, the procedure part of it, the skeleton is important here. So watch the skeleton. Watch what we are doing here. We are implementing a function called open. Implementing a function called release. A function called write. Or you may implement some other functions. Now here, this is important. What we are doing in this line is important, this step. We are creating an instance of a structure called file operations. In that particular instance, we are storing the addresses of the functions that we have implemented. This file operations is an instance of function pointers. To each of the function pointer which we are implementing here, we are implementing routines for write, open and release. For those function pointers, we are assigning the addresses of these routines. And then, in the init function, we know that the init function of the module runs when the module is inserted. In the init function, we are carrying out or are carrying out some registration operation. This registration to tell VFS that this object that I've created here, this object that I've created here is a file operations for that file which I've earlier created. This object and the I node that we have created are bound. To the I node FOPS pointer, this object is assigned. This will allow VFS to step into our driver calls as and when the application makes open read write. This is similar to our design three. Design three, we had the image handler structure. We were storing the addresses of the functions in each of the handler, and then we have been taking that handler and registering with VIML. At that time, I told you the bit layer is VIML. VIML should provide a format of how the handler should register, and VIML provides the image handler structure. This is exactly the same as that. VFS provides a structure called file operations. It expects all the drivers to register in that format. So driver is expected to write its hardware logic, then have the hardware logic with that particular interface, called the file operation interface, and then register your driver as instance of time, file operations. Inside the file operations, assign the appropriate pointers there are around 20 different pointers, 20 different function pointers. It means a driver can go up to 20 different function interfaces. Whichever is appropriate for your device, implement only those. In the case of this scale driver, I'm implementing open read, sorry, open write and release. So this is the procedure. All that we need to do is implement appropriate operations. Now, what kind of operations are appropriate for your device? You should figure out depending on the device type. Some devices are not readable. Some devices you could do both, reads and writes. Some devices may offer more features apart from read and write. Based on that, we decide which operation to implement. 
As we go, we'll know more about how to use that. Once we know how to implement that, which operation to support, use that skin, use that interface of VFS, and write your hardware code within that particular function. And then register all of them into a structure of time, file operations. And then take these file operations and integrate that with the inode that you have created in step one. So we take down the skeleton. Um, one second, let me show you. Kernel source code, fs.h. This is the reason why I was stressing so much on design one, two, three. Because that, if it is clear, this will be very easy. There we have seen image handler structure, the handlers getting registered in, along with the function pointers. The whole object was to make this easy. This is the VFS structure called file operation structure. This is the file operation structure. Since I've searched, it will be shown in the tab color. Now here you see the function pointers. It means a file system or a driver can implement these many maximum routines, of which currently we are looking at three of them. One is read, one is write, the other one is open and release. Not every pointer needs to be initialized. You must decide based on what kind of driver you're writing and which device you're writing for and what kind of operations that device supports. Right? And then accordingly, take few pointers, initialize them. And always remember this, this interface has been given to all those services which register with VFS. Now the services which register with VFS are file systems, the character drivers, and protocols. Even the protocols like TCP IP, they register with VFS through a layer called SOCFS. It means not every operation here or not every interface here is meant for a driver. These interfaces have been designed keeping in view the needs of all these services. It means not every function needs to be there as part of a driver. Some functions in fact here, some interfaces are specifically for protocols. Some of them are specifically for file systems or persistent file systems. And some of them are common for all. The reads and writes kind of things are common. So maximum, you'll have these many interfaces in a CAD driver. That's the maximum, of which we don't uh, usually implement all of them, like send page, check flags, F-log, splice write. These are explicitly for file systems. Drivers will not deal with that. 